But you know, we, we have had a lot of work uh, over the past few, few months as a Conservative Caucus. And first and foremost, let me also thank the Mississauga Board of Trade, Chambers of Commerce across the country, Boards of Trade across the country, professional groups, industry associations, small business owners, all of you together helped push back against one of the most egregious attacks on job creators our country has ever seen. Thank you for all of your hard work. We probably can all remember back to the middle of the summer when we uh, were probably having making plans for the fall, maybe businesses were starting to think about hiring strategies or marketing strategies for the fall quarter, and then all of a sudden uh, the government decided to throw a monkey wrench into everyone's plans to grow and expand their businesses and provide new opportunities for the places they live in. Of course, I'm talking about on July 18th when Finance Minister Bill Morneau and Justin Trudeau decided to make life a little bit harder. I shouldn't say a little bit harder, a lot harder for all of us in this room, for all of you in this room who take that risk and, and put everything they have into uh, a business. And why did they do that? Well, if you find out and tell me, <laughs> maybe, maybe then we'll both know. It's still hard to figure out why exactly they decided at this point in time to do the types of things that they proposed. And it was great to watch the boards of trades, the chambers of commerce all come together and work together and share information and, our, and my caucus colleagues, all of us, going home on the weekends, having town halls, meeting with constituents, people who were worried, people who, who weren't worried about making less money that year, people who weren't worried about having maybe uh, to forego the luxuries of life. These were people who were worried about being able to keep the staff they had. There were people who were worried about whether or not they were going to be able to open up that second location and provide opportunities for, for perhaps dozens of people. They were worried for their ability to maintain the opportunities that they had already created. And that was why our caucus, your Conservative members of Parliament, were so passionate about pushing back against these policies. And as we go back and look, you know, I, I, I can think about every time uh, that, that, you know, we were very successful. We got them to walk back a great deal of what they were proposing. We're not out of the woods yet, and we know some new ones came into effect January 1st. Uh, and I gotta tell you, just as an aside, you know, to, to have a government of Canada table drop in the very last few days of the House of Commons, significant new tax regulations for Canadian entrepreneurs without any time for the official opposition to ask questions, to hold the government to account, to quietly do it two weeks, two or three weeks before they came into effect. That is not a way to run an economy. It's not a way to run a country. It's not a way to treat all those entrepreneurs who invest in their communities and believe in this country. But all of us working together were able to push back and force the government to climb down from many of their policies. Now, I have to tell you that very quickly throughout the fall, it became apparent to me that the most popular liberal announcements was when Justin Trudeau was announcing, you know, the biggest rounds of applause he got, the biggest thumbs up he got from people across Canada, was when he was announcing that he was reversing one of his previous announcements. Those were, those were the ones he really hit out of the park. Those are the ones uh, he nailed. But I get so passionate about this particular issue because I benefited from small business owners my entire life. I grew up in a very middle class family. My, my dad worked at the Ottawa Citizen. Uh, my mom worked at CHEO, the Children's Hospital of, of Eastern Ontario. She was a nurse. My dad was a librarian at the newspaper. Uh, he's got a, a post media pension, so all of us in the room, I hope you're subscribing to one of those <laughs> papers, doesn't matter which one. Don't have to read it, just subscribe to it. <laughs> and they, they were very generous, they were very gracious. They, they always tried to make sure that my sisters and I had the types of things that, that, that we needed to grow and see, but there weren't a heck of a lot of uh, luxuries. Uh, we didn't own a car, so you know, not only did I take the number eight to get to square one in Mississauga, but I took the bus to everywhere I needed to go in Ottawa as well. And if you think it's easy to get a girl to meet you at the transit way station <laughs> in January, you have to develop a very, very good pitch. <laughs> so I like to think that's what honed my ability to persuade people uh, in life. But I get so passionate about it because not only did I benefit from, from those jobs, it helped me pay my way through school. I worked as a waiter in a restaurant, and every time that business did well, I had better opportunity. You know, Ellen, you talked about the, the effect on small and medium-sized enterprises, but it goes far beyond that. 
You know, there are 1.4 million small business owners in Canada, but there are millions more who work at those small businesses. And that's what this fight was about. It wasn't just about that part of our economy. It's the benefits that are created all throughout. And that's what the Liberal government just does not understand at any level here in Ontario or federally either. It is always the case that the very people that the Liberals claim they want to help are hurt the most by the very policies that Liberals themselves introduce. That is something that Conservatives are pushing back very hard on as well.